And so I want us this morning to think about that, that for each one of us, it's the same calling. It's lived out, lived out differently, different responsibilities, different, uh, di- you know, we, we all come from different uh, uh, backgrounds and education and experiences and personalities. We have different gifts. Uh, we have different uh, spiritual gifts uh, and natural abilities. Uh, but God has designed for us all to serve him, to serve the king. And so that's what the queen did, and that's what we celebrate, uh, a life lived well, especially when you think of all the scandals that are around in so many areas, whether it's in the church or out the church, in politics, and, uh, and her family uh, you know, has gone through uh, similar uh, experiences. But she has stayed faithful. She has stayed solid and in the public eye uh, uh, throughout all of those years. It's something, I think, for us to celebrate and, uh, but I want to use it as a springboard for us to understand that God has called each one of us to serve him. And, uh, and just as Claire mentioned this morning, and it's, uh, it's lovely to have Claire and Pete with us this morning, um, it's out of a heart of serving the king that we, that we have a heart of compassion. The queen had a heart of compassion. It's one of the things that they've talked about, as well as her faith and her faithfulness, um, was, a, was a queen that had compassion on, on, on people. And we had to be a people that has compassion, and that has to work out uh, in our service to God. Amen? And so I, I hope that you and I uh, will do that. She did her duty, is what everybody says. She did her duty. In other words, she fulfilled her responsibilities, and you and I have responsibilities. God has given her. Whether you do those responsibilities is up to you. And the queen could have refused to have done those responsibilities. She could have reneged on them, uh, but she didn't. And so I believe that she's a great example for us today to, to follow her example and to serve as she served and to fulfill uh, the duties that we have. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 26 says this. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And so that's what she did. She served and she served well. Great teachers serve their students. Great managers serve their workers. Great salespeople serve their customers. The key to anything to be great in it is to serve. And service is at the very heart of who we are as Christians, it's the very heart of who we are and what God has designed us to be. We were created to serve. And so I believe that two words best sum up the Christian life. And those two words are to serve and to give. They sum up everything that, uh, that we are to be. And we see that. Jesus said this in Matthew ten forty five: For the Son of Man did not come to serve, to to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He gave his life, he came to serve and to give his life. And that's where every single one of us that have said yes to Jesus, that's the call on our life, is to serve and to give. To serve and to give. And that's what we do. That's what God's called us to do as that. And so that summarizes the Christian life in two words. So anytime you see a non-serving, non-giving Christian, you realize that they're not living as they ought to live. They're, they're, They're saying maybe one thing, but acting in a different way. The two need to come together, yes? So uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about that uh, this morning, is that we need to learn to serve and we need to learn to give. They are issues that can be learned. We are not naturally generous. We're not naturally um, want to serve. In actual fact, our natural nature is to want people to serve us. Our natural inclination is is not how can I help others, how can I give to others, what can I do for others. Our natural inclination is often what am I going to get out of it and what will people do for me. And and, and so people get married because of what they they will get from the other person, not what they can give. And so it's about giving. The Christian life is, and God has created to be 
givers in, that, in what we do. And so, you can be a Christian, and you can have some great doctrine, you can be a theologian, um, but not be a true believer, because you're not living out what it means to be a Christian. It's not about, about just having a right belief system, it's about having the right actions. And Jesus wants us to be doers of his word, and not just knowers, not just people who say, yes, I believe that. I, I meet people, and, uh, and they'll say to me, oh, no, I don't go to church, but I believe. Well, if you don't go to church, if you don't meet with other people, you're not fulfilling what God commanded. You're not fulfilling what God's desire is for you, yes? Now, going to church doesn't make you a Christian, but it is something that you will do out of a heart, amen, for others. You want to be with others. You want to learn together. You want to support with the one another. You want to be there for one another. So I want to look at quickly at the reasons why we should serve, yes? Some of the reasons that we should serve, and maybe you, hopefully you're aware of some of them, um, but if not today, my aim is that you will be spurred to serve. Yes, that you will hear today and think, I have no excuse that God has definitely said, I need to serve. And so the first one is, of course, as I've mentioned, is we are created to serve. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God's plan for you to serve, and even in how you're going to serve, and he will present those issues to you. And uh, it's a little bit like, uh, I don't know if you, you've experienced it, where you pick up a torch, and you've not used it for a long time, and then when you come to turn it on, even though there's batteries in, it doesn't work. Yes? And, and when you open it up, you find that the batteries have kind of corroded, and there's no power in them. Well, because batteries are designed to be used, and if you don't use them, they don't just stay in the state that, that you had them when you put them in the torch. And you and I are designed by God to serve. If we don't, if we don't work, if we don't use what God has given us, we lose it. And internally, we cor corrode. Internally, we lose our power. So it's only as we work out what God has put in us that we actually keep it and we are able to strengthen it. We as humans are created to serve others. Secondly, we are saved to serve. Yes, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 9 says, it is God who saved us and chose us for this holy work. In other words, we're not here just to take up space. No one is here just and your calling in life is to watch TV. Yes, or just to kind of loiter around, or just to kind of waste time. God has a plan for your life. He wants to utilize your time, your talents, your treasure, the things that you have in your life. He wants to put them to work for his glory, yes? And it's a little bit like so often people have gifts, and some people I know you can talk to, and they are amazing. Some of the things that they, the abilities they have, the knowledge they have, the, you know, it, it, you kind of stand there and you think, I feel so inferior uh, to them. Um, but it's a little bit, for some people, it's a little bit like going to watch a bodybuilding um, a show where they're all going off and they're showing their muscle, a bit like me. Showing their, showing their muscles off and kind of, you know, doing all the pauses. But when asked, you kind of, what, you know, what is the point of your muscles? Well, that's the whole point, is just to show them off. Then they've missed the point. The whole point of having muscles and developing your muscles is to be able to use them practically to help others, to be able to serve and to be able to work, isn't it? There's no point just having something for sure. And so God has given us gifts and abilities so that we can actually make practical use of them. So we have got to build up spiritual muscle. As we build up spiritual muscle, it affects us. So the issue and the question is, why do you come to church? Why do you go to your connect group? Why do you read your Bible? Why do you do some of these things? Why do you go to a Bible study? Why is it just to build spiritual muscle so that you can kind of say, look at me or look at what I do and what I've gone? Or is it actually practical? Do you use what you learn to be able to kind of help others and to, and to minister to other 
people. Yes, the Bible teaches us that maturity is for ministry. He wants us to mature in order that we can serve. And so anybody that's, that uses what God has given them to help other people, it's simply called ministry. It's called serving one another. And so we need to develop spiritual muscles so that we can use them to help others and to serve others. Thirdly, we have been called to service. We've been created, we've been saved, but we've also been called to service. Every Christian is called. Not just missionaries, not just pastors, not just evangelists, not just whatever it, it, it might be, yeah? uh, not, not just uh, people in, in certain spheres of life. When we give our life to Christ, every single one of us are called by God to serve in, a, in, in some way or other. So in other words, the moment we said yes to Jesus, that I want salvation, we also said yes to Jesus to say, I want to serve you. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. Whatever you want me to go, I will go. Whatever you want me to receive, I will receive. Whatever you want me to, to relinquish, I will relinquish. Whatever you want me to lack, I will lack. Whatever you want me to suffer, I will suffer. Whatever you want me to uh, do, whatever is your command, I will do it. And so that is what we, that's what signed up to when we give our life to Jesus. Unfortunately, too often people are in it for what they can get out of it rather than what they can give. But God is looking that we love him but then sh and, and that we show our love for him in practical ways. Galatians 1 and verse 15 says this, God in his grace chose me even before I was born and called me to serve him. Ephesians 4 and verse 1 says, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. We need to live in light of what God has done for us. Fourthly, we've been gifted for service. We each of us have gifts. And uh, 1 Peter 4 verse 10 says, God has given each of you some special abilities. Be sure to use them to help each other. Yes, in other words, the, the, you, have, you have abilities, some natural, some spiritual. Uh, you've got talents. You've got all sorts of things you can do. You know, they they talk about how many abilities that we have, and it's hundreds of abilities that we have. When we start to think about what we can do, it is absolutely amazing, and we need to be using them for the service of others. Fifthly, we are commanded to serve. We're commanded to serve others. Matthew 20 and verse 28 said, Jesus said, your attitude must be like mine, for I did not come to be served but to serve. Jesus didn't come to be served. He's the king of glory. He's the one out of anybody that could come and demand uh, us to serve him, and yet he came to serve. He is the supreme example. It is not optional. Now, some people think service is optional. They think, oh, well, you know, if I get time and whatever, I want to say to you, it's a command of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is human nature for us to want to be served. But if we are a Christian, then our question is, how can I help? Who can I help? In what way can I meet the needs of those around me? Amen? So a mature Christian is interested in service. And, uh, and an immature, immature Christian is interested in serve us. Yes? So is it service or is it serve me or serve us? It also proves that you belong to Jesus when you, when you serve. Romans 7 verse 4 says, You are part of the body of Christ and you belong to him in order that we might be useful in the service of God. Ministry not attendance, is evidence that Christ is in you. Yes, sometimes people think by virtue of attending a connect group and attending a church service, whatever, but that that is, that is them doing their duty. I want to say to you, that is not you doing your duty. Yes, that's minimum beyond minimum of, uh, of doing it. It is the fact that you are serving him in some way or other. And I, so many times people say, oh, but this and but that. Well, yes, unfortunately, a lot of people have got a big butts and they spend most of their lives sitting on them. But church family also needs your service. 
The church needs your service. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, All of you together are the one body of Christ, and each of you is a separate and necessary part of it. There's no spare parts. There's no ornaments in the kingdom of God. They're each one of us are, are, are being made by God to be useful. Yes? That we are needed by God. So in other words, if you have a... Let's think about your body and think to yourself, okay, you're, not, you're, you're going to lose your little finger. Yes? Now, is, are you going to miss your little finger? Yes. Now, can you survive without it? Yes. But how much better are you? They actually say that the little finger is the key to the hand. That the, the, the power of the hand is in the little finger. And, uh, and so what I'm saying to you is, is you can live without an eye. But oh, how much better it is to be able to see with both eyes. Yes, and to be able to see clearly. So what I'm saying to you is, whatever part you are in the body of Christ, we need that. The church needs that service, yes? And so if you don't serve, the church isn't able to be all that it can be. It can be, you know, it might be legless. It might be without a nose, uh, no sense of smell, no sense of... But it's together. The body is beautiful, isn't it? And God has created us to be like that, that we are a necessary part of the church. You see, the strength of Destiny Church is not its pastors. It's those that work, that serve those that are there in kids' work and those that are, are doing the youth work, those that are, are serving in so many ways to make today possible. Yes, I, I just turn up. But so many people are involved and it's, that's what makes church, church, isn't it? In our connect groups, the guys that are leading them and people that are in and serving and serving in different ministries and some of you are ministering into communities, uh, 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 you know, to, uh, sort of say, into ministries in the community. And making a powerful difference. And for, for life to say, together what we can do in compassion. But any one of us on our own can only do a limited amount, but together. When we invite people to Alpha, together. When each of us do that, how much more of a difference does that mean? How many people can be in the kingdom of God? How many together lives can be changed uh, when we work together? Now, the other thing is, is that when we serve others, that's how we serve God. When we serve other people. Colossians 3 verse 23 says that whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. I think that changes our perspective completely. You should understand that it doesn't matter how somebody responds to, the, to us serving them. We get the blessing because God is watching and he is pleased and he says, you serve me when you serve them. Yes, and just as, as uh, uh, Claire mentioned earlier, when we give to the poor, we are lending to the Lord. When we give, we are serving. We are using our resources to serve other people. Our resources are not our own. We don't own anything. Unfortunately, too often we think we own it, but we're stewards of it and how we use that matters. Yes, and then, because we owe everything to Christ, is one good reason, if nothing other, to serve him, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I owe him everything. He changed my life. He's given me hope. He's given me a home in heaven. He's, he's, he's given me strength. He enables us to see the world completely different. Romans 12 and the first verse says, Because of God's great mercy to us, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to the service of Jonathan. No, dedicated to his service, yes? It's always to God. We don't serve God out of fear. We don't serve God out of guilt. We serve him because we love him, because of his love for us, because of his compassion for us, because of his generosity towards us, yes? So we serve out of gratitude, it's always, Lord, I am so grateful what you've done. This is a pleasure. This is my privilege to be able to serve you. You know, when you've seen the people queuing up for the queen, and particularly you see the people that have served in the military, the way that the pride, because they made a pledge of allegiance to the queen. 
and, uh, and so they served in, their, in, the, in the forces, whatever they might be, uh, and she was the, the representative head, and they would do that. And I remember one guy, and he, he, he went before, the, before the, uh, the coffin, and he, he stood, and then he stood, and he went back again, and then he, he was, and it was, and I just thought, here's a guy, but it means so much. He'd served, and all the guys, when you see them coming uh, with medals and all sorts of things, were coming to be able to say thank you because of who she was. And I want to say to you, one day, all the medals that we have and all the accolades that we have and all the things that God gives us, one day, the privilege is going to be to put it at the feet of Jesus. In fact, one of the things that the Queen said is she's looking forward to the day when she can put her crown at the feet of Jesus. That was our Queen. Let's pray that the King has the same, uh, the same faith. Amen? And that's the faith that we need to have. So regardless of whether... Uh, of whether the monarchs or anybody else serves him, we're called to serve him. Amen? Service just makes life meaningful. It gives it significance. It gives it purpose. Uh, Mark 8 says, if you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will find new life. That's one of the greatest things. People that have been ill, people that have been depressed, you see them once they start to serve, once they start to give, once they start to love out, how it affects them. And every one of us, we are built to love. God has designed us to serve. And unless we are giving of what we are, we're never fully going to be what God has called us to be. We're never going to express and be able to understand all that we have for us. You see, the thing is, every one of us are going to give our life for something. The only question is, what will you give your life for? What are you giving your time into? What are you giving your finances into? What are you giving your schedule into? What are you thinking about? What is it that you're giving your life for? Because we all serve something or someone. The question is, who or what? And today, I want to say to you, let's serve the king of kings. Let's serve the king who is above all other kings. Let's serve him because of who he wants us to be. You see, the issue is, it is not about the duration of our life. It's about the donation of our life. You know, the people that are queuing up, some have waited a short amount of time, and some of the people, that, for example, the dignitaries, they get kind of uh, the, the short route. If people have got uh, you know, handicaps, disabilities, various things, they're able to go in a shorter queue and other people have, uh, have gone the, the, the normal route, but theirs has varied between three miles and five miles. I want to say to you, it doesn't matter whether your journey is short or long. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter how you get there. What matters is that you're there. And what matters is that once you're in the kingdom of God, that you serve the king and that you love the king with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your so the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said this, Keep busy in your work for the Lord, since you know that nothing you do in the Lord's service is ever without value. One day we're going to be accountable for how we use what we've been given. There's two questions God's going to ask you. First one is, what have you done with my son, Jesus Christ? And secondly, what have you done with what I gave you? One is about salvation and the other is about stewardship. We are designed to be good stewards of what God has given us. And how we use that really matters to us. But the most exciting thing is, one day we're going to get rewarded. One day we're going to get a medal. One day we're going to receive crowns. We're going to receive uh, rewards for the things that we have done for him. Jesus said this in John 12, 26. My father will honor anyone who serves me. You want to be honored by God, serve him. Yes. And if you want to hear the well done of, uh, of the thing, uh, Matthew 25 says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful of few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's ha uh, happiness. I want to say to you, the reward for using what God gives you is more responsibility. It gives you more things to look after. It gives you greater things. I think that's fantastic, isn't it? Yes, and we have a responsibility to it. So I want us to just to have a prayer today. 
The prayer is Psalm 86 and verse 11. Teach me to serve you with complete devotion. If you want to pray that today, if you, maybe if you've never given your life to Christ, or you've never actually said to Jesus, I want to serve you with my life. Maybe today you've just realized that there's so much involved in ministering and serving and giving of your life, giving of your time and your talents. And maybe you, if you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to just pray with us. But maybe you just want to pray that simple prayer of David's. Teach me to serve you with complete devotion. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, for all that, Lord, that you have done for us, that you came to serve, not to be served, and that you've called us, you've created us, and that, Lord, that you have given us so many good things, uh, Lord, that you've equipped us to serve. And we thank you, Lord, that you have uh, just enabled us, Lord, to have so many opportunities. We thank you that you've actually planned things in our life, that for each one of us, it's a different journey. But we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to live it out so that we can, Lord, leave a legacy to our children and to the next generation and to those around that we'll be able to look at our lives and to say that was a life worth living. That was a life well lived. Hallelujah. Father, we do pray for that. And I pray particularly for those today that maybe have never made made a decision to follow you. I pray today, Lord, that, uh, that for each of them as they pray and they ask you into their life, ask you to love them, uh, uh, they accept your love, they accept your kindness, they accept your salvation, accept your work on the cross, that today that they would welcome you into, into their lives and to serve you all the days of their life. Lord, today we declare that we turn over our life, our entire life, everything we are, everything we have, to you. Lord, help us to constantly be reminded of the vow we made the day we gave our life to you, was to say yes to you, and always keep saying yes in every situation. I pray that in Jesus' lovely name. Amen.